All right, now let's focus on the former Deputy Senate mm -hmm. President, Ike Kuremadu, who is now in the eye of the storm. The former Deputy Senate President, that Ike Kuremadu, is at risk of being sentenced to 10 years imprisonment in line with the Modern Slavery Act 2015 of the United Kingdom after a London court found him and his wife, Beatrice, guilty of organ trafficking. Following the guilty verdict by Mr. Justice Johnson, Ikuramadu and his wife were remanded in custody and await sentencing on May 5. And of course, uh, we would be discussing this further with the barrister with us in the studio, uh, Barrister GD Ulugu. Thank you for staying with us. You're I'd welcome. like to start by getting your perception of this whole imbroglio. It started in June 2022, and up till now, uh, it's looking now. It's looking like, uh, of course, now they've been found guilty, and it's looking like they might have to spend the next decade behind bars. You know, it's it's quite interesting, and. Um it may be uh, on the platform of comparing systems. You know, the prosecution lasted for about six weeks, no adjournments, and then um, they were not even released on bail. And the wife was <coughs> released on bail, though. Yes, oh. I know. But the principal, the main actor, and I'll try to throw light on the mindset of the UK jurisprudence on that, and then. Um, there are three strong pillars in criminal justice ecosystem. You talk about thorough investigation. So even before they were arrested, investigation went on to mm. collate the materials needed for the next pillar, which is diligent prosecution and a committed judiciary. And then um, there were several elements considered <coughs> and in criminal uh, justice, you talk about crime as being the merging of guilty intention and guilty act. And that's why you have the opportunity of being defended. You are a defendant in a criminal matter under the modern dispensation. And what the law says is that unless the allegations are proved beyond all reasonable doubts, you cannot convict. And here we are now. There were questions to be, uh, to be considered what was the intention of bringing the young man and organ donation is not a crime on its own but there is a way you go around it legitimately and one of the key factors that operated negatively in this case is that there was going to be a compensation mm. of about seven thousand pounds mm. for the young man <clears throat> of course in a in a deal of about eighty thousand pounds organ transplants and that he was not uh, fully aware of what was ahead. So for the UK Sorry government... Sorry to butt in, uh, Barrister. Uh, I'd like to understand something you said. You said it's not a crime, organ trafficking, or rather organ donation, uh, organ donation isn't donation, a crime. Uh, a so what exactly is the way to go about it in the UK? Because I read the Act, the Modern Slavery Act 2015, which says that whether there is consent, whether the donor is uh, an adult or not, it is still an offense in the United Kingdom. So what exactly is the process of I donating? Think, I think, Bola, I think I need to come in here because... I still read that act, but the, the case is if it is done in a view to exploit the individual, because most of the times they may not tell the individual that this is exactly what you're coming to do. They might just make it look like they're coming to give you a better life. Whether or not the person is, you know, well aware of what he's doing or the person is an adult, where, that's where the issue comes in. I, I think the barrister would have... Oh, donation is donation. It's donation. Mm -hmm. I can donate to a friend. But I have to be of age, fully aware of what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not doing it for business. It's just like the same crisis we have with um, uh, human trafficking. A Nigerian lady got whisked away recently after a long season of human trafficking, uh, telling some of these ladies, oh, I'm going to get you a good job, and they go through a harrowing journey only to end up as sex workers in those communities. So crime will be established when the facts point to it. At the point in time, the age of the young man uh, came to the light. Mm. The Nigerian Immigration Service tried to help. But the UK system will not so depend on what the Nigerian system has to offer. 
And I bring to four the case of the former governor of Delta State, Ibori. James Ibori. Exactly. Who was accused of corrupt practices in Nigeria, also in the UK. I mean, he escaped all the long and short arms of the law in Nigeria. But he was picked up in the UK, mm. uh, in Dubai, and flown to the UK to answer questions of crime. And he was convicted <coughs> for 13 years. You know, and in the process of that prosecution, some Nigerians traveled to tell the court he built Olympic size stadium in <laughs> Delta and things just to pass away. And the court said the business of the court was not to evaluate his performance in office, but to jail him for specific crime. And this is one of the, this Ekuremadu's case is one of the test case in the first when it comes to modern slavery. And some nations frown at modern slavery. And that's coinage, slavery is mm. important. You can donate, but slavery is exploitation. So it's like just taking disadvantage of this young Yes, but the, the part, <coughs> the cross in that law that is still unclear to me is the part where they said whether there is consent. If you're a donor, it means you're giving your consent. Yeah, but if from the adult, circumstances mm. of the case, the consent also, consent also will be subject to scrutiny. You know, but so they are saying whether consent is given or not. Mm. You you still it still depends on the circumstances. If there is any pointer to exploitation, True. it becomes a crime. I can donate if I choose to, just like I donate blood. But it has to be done willingly. What you about know? in a situation where they do not in any way make it clearly to the individual who is donating that this is what you're coming here to do? Perhaps they they might have given <coughs> the individual. A different picture that we are giving you a better life over here. Mm. Could that, it's, could it's, that it's not be It's one of the points considered by the court also, by the judicial system there, that okay, what happens to the sustainability? It, it's difficult for a man with two kidneys to go on with life, generally speaking. True. You now talk of someone with one kidney. So, how do you see in that environment, attention is given to the human welfare, human health. And that's why you see our leaders rushing there. You know, I, my, my, my in-law in the U.S., <clears throat> I went with him for just a medical checkup, uh, Professor Ivy Adafio. And I was so amazed. Right in the car, they were phoning him. Oh, do doctor, you're supposed to be here now, waiting for you. And I said, ah, Uncle, and I didn't enjoy for him. <laughs> they want to make sure that you are upscale in your health. So if this young man is coming to donate, are you just going to abandon him? They know what it costs to maintain that, that lifestyle. You know, the, the major mm -hmm. one of the major challenges or issues was the fact that it was even the lad, that's the 21-year-old victim, who actually eventually ran to the police because they discovered that his DNA didn't even match that of the daughter. Eventually... As presented. So there are several issues. Mm -hmm. I think at the time, it was being presented like a cousin and things mm -hmm. like that. And again, about system. Verification is very important. You know, I got to the Canadian border, going in from the U.S., and they looked at my profile. It's online. And they asked me a simple question. You are a lawyer? I said, yes. Uh, what aspect of law? I told them. And the next question was like a thunderbolt, because I was with my wife. Is your wife a lawyer too? Instinct could have made you to say yes. And from that moment, you are in trouble. Mm. Because they want to be, you know what, I, you see, so, and that's why life, and that's why I advise people, when you fill in your bio data and everything, please make sure it's consistent. But what could have been the reason they asking your wife if she's a lawyer? They didn't ask me, they asked me. Yeah, you. In okay, you are coming into their country on vacation. That is your claim. They must profile you to be sure. You know, I handle this uh, dual citizenship applications. At the point, I almost get angry. The questions, how the business you do, when you register the business, your tax profile, because they want to be sure mm. that whoever is coming in here is not coming to sponsor terrorism and scatter their economy. Barista, one of the things that worked against the Equerimadus again is the fact that the deputy mm. Senate president is someone 
who understands what it means, violence against yes, persons. Yes, it was during his tenure, It was during his tenure as Deputy Senate President that the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act was, you know, or, uh, pushed as an act. That was in 2015. And so the UK government or the, you know, the panel sitting on the case were surprised that someone who understands what violence the against laws, persons, who exactly, understands the law, shouldn't be involved in, in this kind of case. Enlightened person when it comes to legislation, you know. And if you look at Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 99 as amended, it says that the National Assembly shall make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of the nation. So if there's a personality who has been a major a stakeholder in that machinery, then he should understand the workings of the law. So all these things are brought. Like I said, they were given the opportunity of defense. It's such a touching case because mm. this family, they, they need help. This family needs help for the daughter. But again, for the judicial system in the UK, that is a sentimental issue. It does not touch on the substance of the law. Hmm. You see, like in Nigeria, exactly. we would of course know. talk you, about you, that. You, you said it, you know. <laughs> so these are issues. It's a touching matter, really. You know, I pray no one falls into that situation of needing help. Mm. You know, sometimes when you need help, you really need help, and there could have been legitimate ways of going about it. And again, that is why. Even when people are trying to help you process some things, make sure that from time to time, you know, for you may just say somebody should help you fill a form online. Maybe you want to apply for a visa, renew your visa, and your birthday is 23rd July, like, like, like my own. And you are you say, just, you know, okay, just uh, use your discretion. And they put 23rd June. Hey, mm. that may land you in trouble. But you see, it goes there's no to perfect show that. society, really. Mm. But the scrutiny is really, really uh, top line. But it goes to show mm -hmm. that the uh, senator or, you know, it, the de former deputy senator president probably left out some details when it comes to this particular issue. Because it was said that immediately they discovered that the boy's DNA didn't match with the daughter. It was on his way to the, was it the United States? Another no, country. Turkey. Turkey, Turkey yes. to get another donor. Exactly. So it, 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 it's looking like he was a bit careless about the whole situation. But you already talked about the fact it's, that it's when you're about in being careless. Let's face situation. the reality. You mm. see, the elders in the Yoruba land say any jaudeba lokoni uh, which means that it's a man that is not facing battle, that we call himself a man, when battles come. Mm. You see, so these are issues. And uh, for some, again, <coughs> another lesson to learn, because the, the conclusion has been released, but the final conviction is not there. So some of us are still praying that um, uh, there can still be, you know, a soft landing or whatever. But the lesson is that, like we discussed the issue of the petroleum industry management in Nigeria, can we have these facilities in Nigeria? Can we manage, can we also develop this country? Because but do you think the Nigerian government did enough to help us in this situation? Because <laughs> it was even in the middle of this that his property was confiscated in Nigeria. So do you think we did enough in maybe pushing for his uh, maybe release or ensuring that the UK government uh, attend or tempered uh, justice with mercy? If you want to breach diplomatic sovereignty, then it's up to you. And we saw the case of Zainab Ali, who was uh, wrongly uh, accused in Saudi Arabia for uh, some drugs that was found in her uh, luggage. Mm. She, the uh, Nigerian government intervened. We know that's a very grievous crime in Saudi Arabia. Yes. But we saw the Nigerian government intervene in that case, and she was released. Intervened and thorough investigation further investigation will be carried out mm -hmm. to confirm. And in this case also, the Nigerian government tried. The Nigerian Immigration Service came off with documentations and things like that, you know. But you cannot force anything on the UK judicial system. You understand what I'm saying? So, on, and you expect also that um, with someone of that caliber, the government should also uh, intervene but it's the UK that will take the final decision I'm sure that I just told you now during the case of um, Ibori in the UK 
So Nigerians travel down there uh, to try mm. and you know touch the compassion of the court, but it's just their way of doing things. It's just like Indonesia, for instance, when it comes to drug issues, is zero tolerance. tolerance. It's a you know so it's all about the jurisprudence of each uh, nation. Some things that you may overlook here, they won't overlook. You know, I was going to New York and I got to uh, Abu Dhabi. From Abu Dhabi, if you travel to a particular airline, you do your border control and checks there into the US. So when you get to New York, you just move your bag and move in. Do you know my delay in providing the specific address of where I was going to stay in the U.S. almost made them to throw me back to Nigeria to mm. discontinue that journey because the government wants to have a place they will pin you to. So even if you get to that place, you know, and you run away to everywhere, from that point, they can start tracing you. But when you just say you are going to U.S., no specific address. Ah. <laughs> It's, it's not allowed. You better abort that journey. Mm. That is how careful they are. And you should not be surprised. It's such an environment where the moment a child is born, that child is registered. For the government to profile the development, the needs, adjust the economy to ensure that that child adds value in the ecosystem so you, you of the national the, so the it's Nigerian a, government did enough, despite the fact that in all of this, whether was when enough, they confiscated whether the enough, I cannot say. And when it comes to international diplomacy, isn't that here or there? there, there. Exactly. I mean, people, some are saying that the UK assisted the arrest of uh, Kanu in Kenya or wherever. Those are diplomatic issues. But the courts will consider the elements of the allegations. And the case must be proved beyond all reasonable doubt. Mm. So, and like I said, there was opportunity given to defense. You see, so this uh, and it, it's such a and what we can learn generally is that you need to pay attention to details. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times you are doing some business and oh guy, it does not matter. It it matters. Mm -hmm. You see. So in this case now, looking at this Equerimado's case now, it would have been mm -hmm. a different ball game if it were a separate individual needing a donor for a particular issue. But this time around, it's a more of a family thing. The dad, the mom, they are all involved in this case. Could the UK government not temper justice with mercy, considering the fact that if, for instance, they give a verdict and the verdict says that they will be sentenced, which is on the 5th of uh, May, May, could that not affect the psychology of the child? All those who have been considered, and you heard my prayer earlier in the course of this program, that I pray they have been convicted, but the punishment has not been read out you can only preempt that okay for this kind of offense is you know so and the government has the prerogative to say okay we are considering this there can still be interventions yeah. but basically uh, what definitely it will affect that child but you see when it comes to laws and that is why they say that the ignorance of the law it's not an excuse, it's not an excuse. Mm. you see if you drive against traffic and you are asked to bring 70,000 naira from your 80,000 naira savings, and you are still owing rent, it will affect you. Mm. But the law is not looking at how the law is it affects you, but to say, ah, eh, Oga, next time, <laughs> respect mm. the traffic rules. So these are issues of laws. You know, so, so, I, I was, I was going to ask, I was going to ask God, God, that God, you created the Garden of Eden not for yourself, but for Adam. And he just offended you, you threw him out. Then, what happened? So, that is issues with laws. Particularly yes, when it comes... Okay, look at Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy was a big uh, boy in Nigeria. You know, uh, dining and whining with the high and mighty. But, the moment the American government picked him up, they didn't consider all those. Okay, now, look at the issue of terrorism in Nigeria. The government claimed to have identified about 400 sponsors of terrorism in Nigeria. But they will never name names. That statement didn't come from opposition, from government. Mm. You see, and none is yet to be prosecuted. And in Dubai, 
far away Dubai. Six were identified, arrested, prosecuted, and all jailed. So, it's, 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 it's they say it, one man's Master, mixed. we really are it's, pressed for time, but I'd like to ask, like, two questions. At uh, first... Would maybe uh, the medical system, the UK government, and maybe the court consider on compassionate grounds getting the daughter a kidney, looking at the circumstances facing her parents now and the fact that it may be difficult for her to get uh, that. And then secondly, bringing that situation to a country like Nigeria, if that had happened in Nigeria, uh, would it be the same story? You can answer that question in Nigeria, <laughs> so let me take the other one. Mm. You know, there are NGOs, there are organizations. Do you even know this issue of uh, prostate cancer and things like that? There are NGOs across the world that will sponsor your operations. and It's all about information. So those facilities are there. Uh, so for the care of that child, we expect that the stakeholders will still move in the direction of help. Because there will be some rich people across the world who will just read about the story and say, okay, I will take care of this. Look at what happened in Turkey, the uh, earthquake. A child was born in the midst of, that, of the rubbles. Mm. The mother died. And people are applying from across the world to adopt that child. That You escaped this great mm. uh, tragedy. That mm. we, you know, so there is kindness in the world. It depends on how you can tune the channel of your life towards it. So there are possibilities. So is it safe for us to, you know, conclude at this time that a query mother knew all he could have done to get it legitimately, but decided to exploit the ignorance of that child? You cannot make that claim. But that appears like the claim the court has made. We are not the court. Mm. Sincerely speaking, on the platform of compassion, I don't wish anyone should experience what that family is experiences mm. but it just teaches us to pay attention to details Indeed. while seeking help you know and you can see now even the doctor or better also with his career and things like that so, so right. what he says is that some nations have drawn the limits of what will be tolerated i said it and i i believe we, are, we want to adopt it in nigeria now after this beaver's experience uh, we go to the Dubai airport, we're coming in from London. They capture your fascia, look, your eyeballs. You cannot remove your eyeballs. You can go and burn your thumbprints <laughs> on, on a hot object and alter it, you see. But will you remove your eyeballs because you want to go into crime? Mm. So anytime you come into that airport and you move near the camera, you are profiled and in some countries, as you come in, you think they love you so much, they give you a SIM card that welcome to our country. You can use this while you are here as a tourist, and you are happy. And everything that has to do with security is connected to that SIM card. So they can monitor you <laughs> as you are moving around, track you, and things like that. So there are sophisticated approaches, you know, and there are several things, you know. Uh, I got to George Bush Airport. I was coming to Nigeria. I had bags. And they told me, you're only entitled to, you don't go there. Ah, what can you do for me? And they tell you to go and dump it outside. <laughs> you know, so, their rules are there. Their rules are there. So, you need to understand what is permitted. and what. Look at Dubai. Dubai slammed uh, visa ban Nigeria. on Nigerians. Generally, that we need to cleanse our environment. There, there, are, there are things we don't tolerate here. And, you know, so these are issues. And you look at the aviation sector. You know how much of uh, aviation business concerns that is held down in our central bank here? Mm. You know, they are, they are foreign money. So these are issues, systemic. 
system? Well, it's left to be seen what the court <coughs> would decide come May 5th, mm -hmm. although uh, there are also, you know, contemplations as regards the fact that this 10-year imprisonment may even be like uh, on a lighter note because there, there's the option of the life imprisonment, mm -hmm. especially if the transplant had already been done. That will because uh, the action or the acts had not yet been committed and uh, perhaps that's why it's really uh, within the 10-year imprisonment and we would see what the court would decide. I come pray, and there's it. nothing God cannot do. Sincerely speaking, it's a touching <coughs> narrative. It's a, it's a touching narrative, mm. you know. But uh, we cannot, do, we, we are not UK government and then... Um, mm, we're not the know, court. Exactly. So, so we'll just uh, keep watching and see how that pans out. But thank you so much. Barista Jido Logo for always uh, giving us insightful analysis on the show. We thank God. Mm. God bless Nigeria. All right, God bless Nigeria. We're still here. We'll be back to touch other issues on iBrand Daybreak. Stay with us. <laughs>